Hey guys, so glad to have you guys here today. I've got a few more candy holder designs um, for Halloween that were actually requested by you guys and that's what I'm sharing with you today. And I do have other Halloween candy holder designs as well. So if you guys want some different ones than these ones, then you can check those out. And you can just scroll through my videos to find those. Um, but I'll also link to them in this video description to make it easy for you to find. And also in the video description, you're going to find a link to grab these free candy holder SVG files that I am using for today's tutorial, along with links to any of the products that I'm using as well in case that you, you want to check those out. So once you've got those files, go ahead and upload those to Cricut Design Space and then add those to your canvas. And I am adding all three of them. You may just be adding one of them. Um, but whichever ones you want to add, go ahead and add those. And I am zoomed out, that way you can guys can kind of see what I'm working with. So your files may look a little bit larger if you're not zoomed out. Okay, so we do have our sugar skulls, our ghost, and our haunted house. So these files are ready. You don't need to modify them, but there are a few things you may want to do. So if you just want to make one of the versions, like you don't want to make both the perforated back or the one with the closing mechanism, then you will need to delete some of those layers. So to do that, you do need to ungroup these first. So if you just wanted to make the one with the perforated back, then all you're gonna need right here is this group. So you can click on this one and delete that, and then delete those closing mechanism pieces, and that's all you're gonna need. And if you just wanted to make the one with the closing mechanism, you would just delete this piece instead. But I'm gonna undo what I did right here, and I'm gonna go back to where these are still grouped together. Um, because I'm going to be making all of them to show you guys how to do this. But one other thing that I want to show you is how to resize these. Although I highly recommend using the ornament size that I'm using here, which is 3.14 inches. And there is a link to them in the video description. Um, in case you have a different size ornament, I do want to show you how you can resize those to use that. But if you're using the ornaments that I'm using and that I recommended, you do not want to resize these. And I do not recommend going any smaller with this skull right here because it already has a lot of fine cuts. So it's just going to be a little bit difficult if you make it smaller, but it'll be fine to go smaller with the haunted house and the ghosts. So what you're going to do if you have a different size ornament is just measure the opening of that ornament and you want to get an exact measurement. So for example, say it's two and a half inches. You're just going to create a circle in Cricut Design Space and you're just going to Resize that to the size of your opening, which is going to be two and a half by two and a half inches. And now just place this over the circle part. And you want to make sure these are grouped together because you want to resize everything together to keep those proportions. And then just click right here and continue to resize this. We can actually zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here. Until the, the circle is the same size as the circle in your design. So right here, they look like they are the same size. So once you have that resized to that size, then you can just delete the circle unless you need to use it to resize another one. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys how to do that. I'm just gonna undo that because I wanna cut them at the regular size. So really quickly, let me just undo all that. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and click on Make It. And if you keep all the same colors, they coordinate really well, and it makes it easy to cut all of these together. So as you see, all the white go together on the white cardstock and all the black. Um, but if for some reason you have a different size cardstock, um, because this will work with the Cricut, Ex the Cricut Joy Extra is what I believe it is, you can change this to letter size right here, and it's going to work with that as well. You're just going to have to cut on more sheets of paper. So I do recommend the 12 by 12 if you have an explore or a maker but if you have the Cricut Joy Extra then you can still make these. So these are just simple cuts you're just cutting cardstock so go ahead and cut those out. And so once everything is cut out before you glue anything down I highly recommend lining up all of your pieces because you don't want to glue anything on backwards and so all of the layers for each of the designs they are going to add up perfectly so make sure that you rotate them or flip them until they do. And I'm going to start with the flying ghosts first. And so this candy holder only has three layers. So you're going to start by gluing the two bottom layers together first. So you're gluing that black layer on top of the white layer. And if you're using different colors, obviously this is going to be different. But this is how I have the colors in design space and how I'm using them in my designs just for reference. 
And then next you're going to take that top layer and you're going to flip it over so that the top of it is facing down on your workspace. And you're going to add your foam dots covering the bottom of this. And you can also cut like small strips of foam tape if you have foam tape and not foam dots on hand. So either one's going to work. But you do want to make sure that you apply the dots around the circle because this is what's going to help keep that ornament secure. And then place a couple around the edges so that it all is kind of the same level when you push it down. And then you're going to place your ornament on the bottom piece in that circle. And so it's going to fit right inside that little circle between where the two layers were glued together. And if you are making the version with a perforated back, then you need to make sure that you do add your candy to the ornament before this next step. Um, but if you're making the version with a closing mechanism, then you'll add the candy at the end. So once you have that ornament in place and the candy in there if you need it, you're going to go ahead and add that top piece. So you're just pressing down to attach the foam dots to attach that top layer to the bottom layer. And this should be a tight fit. Um, so just slowly press down and you don't need to press down too hard. You do want that dimension in between it because that's what holds the ornament in place. And if you are making the version with the closing mechanism, there are going to be a few extra steps. And I'm going to show you those steps as we assemble the haunted house candy holder next. Okay. So with the haunted house candy holder, it does have four layers. So you're going to layer these in this order with the black layer on the bottom, then the green, then the purple, and then that top black layer on top. And these are going to line up perfectly, so make sure that you line those up first and flip any pieces if needed so they all line up perfectly before you glue anything down. And you're going to start by gluing the two bottom pieces together. So you're going to glue that green on top of that black layer. And then you're going to put that aside and you're going to glue the two top pieces together. So you're gluing that black layer right on top of that purple layer. And then you're going to add your ghost. So you can either glue these to the front of your haunted house, but I like to glue them on the inside so that you can see them through the windows. So to do this, you're just gluing those ghosts to the purple layer and you're just kind of gluing them in the window openings. And so I'm just adding a tiny bit of glue to like the little top and sides of the ghost. So you don't need a whole lot of glue for this. And obviously you don't want it on the middle of the ghost if that part's going through the window. Um, and if you are doing the closing mechanism version, then you do want to assemble this part before you attach the layers together and add that candy dome. Um, so go ahead and place that bottom piece down and you want it laying so that the bottom side of it is actually facing up. And then you're going to take your three um, closing mechanism pieces and you're going to layer them by starting with the circle piece on the bottom. And then you're going to take that piece that has a lever next and then the circle with the tab pieces on top. And you do want to make sure that the hole in the candy holder is covered where you're placing these and that the part where there's no tab pieces for that top piece, you want to make sure that that's on the side where the level where your lever is going to pull down. And with these three pieces still in this order, go ahead and flip them over and place them on your work surface. And you just need to add a tiny bit of glue to the little tip of those tab pieces. And then you're going to fold those tab pieces over so that you attach all three of those layers together. And it's really important that you don't use a lot of glue because you don't want that glue to seep through. And you also do not need to pull those tab pieces tight. Just fold them over naturally because you do want plenty of room for that lever to move in between. So when you do have all those tab pieces glued down, you should easily be able to move your lever up and down. If you can't move it at all, then it's likely that either glue seeped in when you were gluing those tab pieces or you pulled those tab pieces too tight so you'll need to loosen them. Um, so you can always just cut out these three pieces again and try again. But definitely make sure to test it out before you glue it onto the back of your design. And then when you glue this onto the back of your candy holder, you just want to make sure that you're covering up that hole and that you're able to pull the lever down. And when you do, that it's going to reveal the hole in the back of your candy holder. And it should be easy to be able to open and close this with the lever. So if you're having issues, um, again, that goes back to how you assembled the little closing mechanism. So you'll want to reassemble that. But once the closing mechanism is in place, you can go ahead and attach the rest of your candy holder together. So go ahead and place those foam dots on the bottom of that top layer. And then make sure that you get do place those around the circle because this is what helps to hold that ornament in place. And if you don't want to use foam dots or even like foam tape, you can glue this down. But if you glue this down, you're also going to need to glue the ornament down um, because it is the little dimension in the foam dots that holds that ornament down. 
Um, so just make sure you glue both of those down if you'd rather do the glue method. Um, but once you got that ornament in place, then go ahead and place that top layer on and press it down to attach those together. And then you're just going to open that lever to add your candy. And then with a sugar skull, you're going to assemble this in the same way as we just assembled the other two versions, um, depending on if you're doing the perforated one or the one with the closing mechanism. However, there are a few more layers to glue together with this sugar skull, so I do want to show you how to glue these. So you're going to start with gluing that orange layer on top of the black layer, and there is going to be an outline, so make sure you glue the orange to the middle so that you have that black outline going all the way around it. And then set this aside while you glue the other four pieces together. So these other four pieces will line up perfectly, so make sure you line them up first, um, that way you don't glue any of these layers on backwards. And you're going to start by gluing the purple layer on top of the pink layer, and then you're going to glue that green layer on top, and then the white layer on top last. And it is helpful to use a glue with a fine tip for this because there are so many small areas to glue. And you can find a link to the glue I'm using in the video description if you do need a recommendation for one. Um, but depending on which version you're making, you're either gonna put the closing mechanism together just as I showed you with the haunted house candy holder, or go ahead and add your candy to the dome and place this in the circle of the bottom piece of your candy holder. And then once you've got all of those in place, go ahead and add your foam dots and attach that top layer to the bottom layer. And just remember, if you are doing the perforated version, always add your candy before you attach it together. But if you're making the one with the closing mechanism, then you can wait and add the candy at the end. It's actually a lot easier to add it at the end, so make sure you wait. Um, but I hope that you guys like these new designs, and if you guys have any questions on how to make these, then you can leave those in the comments, and I will answer them there for you guys. But before you go, make sure to give this video a like, and feel free to say hi in the comments as well, because I love hearing from you guys, and thank you guys so much for watching. Bye!